Hey guys, you're watching the Best Practices Show where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're growing a great restorative practice, one of the things that you know that is inevitable is conflict. So today we've got a world-class expert, Catherine Itell Bell, to help us embrace some of those strategies. And you're gonna see how you can look at it in a different way to grow a very healthy culture. You do not want to miss this. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. We'll see you in a few seconds. Hey guys, welcome back to The Best Practice Show. Thank you so much for watching. We are now up over 30,000 followers on Facebook. Thank you so much for all your suggestions, all your shares, everything. We just love doing this and we've got great programming coming to you here in the second season and today is no exception. I've got one of my good friends on today and she's going to enlighten us in a different way to think about conflict. Now, Catherine, you have been a guest on the show. We love having you on the show. Uh, I enjoy having you every single time. We know who you are, but if somebody who's watching this for the first time, because we do have dental students watching this, they don't know who Catherine Itell Belt is, please share with our listeners and our viewers who you are. Um, I've come from dental and uh, been a practice management consultant for a couple of decades. And just in the last couple of years, we have narrowed our focus and specialized it. Um, and now we focus solely on communication skills training. Yeah. We, have, um, we have probably the best way to describe it is three different lanes. So we have one lane where we focus on communication skills that are patient facing. So telephone skills and financial conversations, those patient uh, conversations. Uh, the middle lane for us is team. So it's leader to team, team to team, um, conflict, uh, team meetings, retreats, sort of building that culture, which is all through communication and, and uh, those kinds of, of systems. And then our third lane is audience facing. So we train other speakers and we train other trainers um, <laughs> to, uh, to, to do that better. And so, but all the overriding umbrella is we're coaching communication skills in all those lanes. Yeah, and so I'll just say this to the viewers, listeners, we love Catherine. She's a great coach for us. And you just recently had a chance to coach all of our coaches and they came back and they go, wow, that was so great because you just offer a very unique and powerful relative and useful perspective on how to communicate with what's really going on in the world. So, um, and I also, I also want to segue this, you and I, our last one that we did. So mm -hmm. if you're a viewer and you're listening to this, reference back to the last one because you had a brilliant um, we had a, you had a brilliant session with us just describing vision and how to put that in place. Can you just give a little snippet about what that's about and how it leads to this one? Yeah, sure. So, you know, no, you can have a business without going through a formal process of putting a vision together. There's thousands of businesses probably within a, a, a few miles of every listener on this, on this, uh, webinar. Um, that did not go through a formal process for a vision and they're successful. So I don't think you need it to be successful. I do, however, think the process is super useful if, they, if you wanna to get to a particular destination quicker mm -hmm. and, a, and have a little more fun along the way, have it be a more direct uh, route there instead of this winding road, right? Where you're sort of in a reactionary mode. If you wanna be in the proactive seat, um, and creating it on purpose, then having that vision crystallized really makes sense. I just think it gets you there faster. And so for me, for small business, it's a, it's a non-negotiable. Um, we do it in, in my business every year, right around this time. I go back to last year's vision to make sure it's still on track. It's still where we're going and make sure that anybody who's working for me is super clear about it. Um, so that process was what we talked about last time. Well, how do you, how do you, how do you put it together? I don't think it's something you create to put in a frame on the wall. You might put pieces of it on your website or brochure, but the reason we do it is to 
clarify for ourselves what to say yes to, what to say no to. It makes that so much clearer. And it allows our people to know the same thing, to know yeah. that clarity and to be inspired around it, to know whether they fit for this team. So today, the reason that relates to today's topic is that when you do that work as an owner, and that's really the only person or a group of people that I think are responsible or should put the vision. This is not a writing a vision isn't a team game. Mm -hmm. uh, that comes strictly from the owner or owners of a business. Agreed. But once they've done it, the team has an important role in then contributing to the how, how are we going to get that done and what creative ideas do they have? So they're an important part of it, but they can't write the vision. The owners need to do that. Yeah. So we talked about that last time, right? And that was so, so critical to that conversation. But at some point, you now that you're clear about it, you have to present it to your team. Right. If you do it well, it is likely that it's going to create, it's funny how, Kirk, the greater clarity now creates very clear concerns and yeah. clear objections, right? The clearer right. they get about where we're going, the more they're clear where we're not going. Yeah. And so now they have some concerns. And so that's today's conversation is about, so once you present this, how do you manage when they raise their hand and say, well, what about this? Or how do I fit into that picture now? Or, you know, those kinds of concerns and objections and how you handle it. Right. And how someone would handle it in that conversation is exactly the same system that someone would use if there was any conflict that arose uh, between two people or groups of people in a, in a business. So. Right. Now let's talk about this because you are, you said it's brilliant. Like you are going to get people raising their hand. There yeah. is going to be conflict. And some of the misconception about creating a program is everyone just buys into the vision and it works so great. Now you've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of people in dental teams, conflict comes, but it's how you deal with it and make it healthy. Would you agree or disagree with that? Totally agree. And um, I don't think it's just a workplace um, occurrence. I mean, if just look at our society and culture today, and, and as it has always been, when two human beings get together, there's mm. going to be at some point, they're not, there's going to be something they don't agree on. What? Be, oh <laughs> crazy, crazy notion. Yeah. Um, will be and so we see it everywhere of course in politics today it's a you know it's a it's a constant uh, form of disagreement that's what it is mm -hmm. and so it's all around us and I think I literally don't think it's too big of a statement to say we could we could actually change the world and certainly the cultures we're currently living in personally and professionally if we could learn to navigate disagreement and conflict differently in a healthier way. And I think we avoid conversations that would actually make our life easier, whether that's professional or personally. We avoid those because we none of us got any sort of, or very few of us grew up in households where we were given good examples of how to, how to have a, a different opinion or disagree um, in a healthy way. And so how would we know, right? And right. there's not a lot of, of um, people who show us that way right now. So I think it's an important topic for people. I think to their credit, people are doing the best they can with the skills they have. And that's why I'm really passionate about getting this message out because knowing a few simple skills and reframing the conversation has changed everything for me personally and professionally in terms of how um, I in step into conflict. Uh, I, I don't avoid it nearly as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm able to step into those conversations much earlier, which is always better, you know, before they escalate into. So, so when you have this frame, it just all gets easier that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about today. Yeah, and you do an amazing job. That I don't know who said this. I think it was Covey. He said the secret of the world is between stimulus and response. Things happen, mm -hmm. but it's what we do between the stimulus and how we respond that adds to you know how the quality of our life. So it's take us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quality, you know, take us through this, Catherine. Like, if I'm a young dentist watching this scene, I go, Catherine, I totally agree with you. But where do I start? Like, I just need, what are the ground rules before we start getting into this? Take us through sure. this. Sure, sure. So there are some, I guess ground rules is a good uh, way to put it. Or I would just say some foundational um, beliefs that that if you could, if you could just take a look at how you approach 
So, so conflict comes to us in a couple of ways. It's either marching down the hallway, shaking its finger at us, right? It's somebody who's upset and they're coming to us. And we don't know often, we don't know what's going to come out of their mouth. We, we can see it. We can tell that they're upset and it's coming to us, being brought to us. But we don't have usually any way to know exactly what that's going to be. Right. Um, the second thing is the second way that we uh, are um, faced with it is we, ha we have an issue. And we need to take it to someone who, if you just, you know, it's the opposite. They don't see it coming. They don't really know exactly what it is that we're going to say. And so we are going to probably catch them off guard. So in either, in either instance, there's, if you just can reframe and take a look at some, some um, internal beliefs around the whole idea of disagreement and conflict, it will set you up for success. Mm -hmm. One of those is is changing our view of someone's got to win this conversation. I mean, there's this, I see a lot in my coaching that people think if I'm really a good community, if I'm really, really good at communicating, then I'll find a way to convince this person that they're wrong and I'm right. 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 If, so, if I'm really good yeah. and that's it. And I'm going to ask your viewers to think, just step out of that for a minute and, and think, what if, what if we didn't have to have a wrong and a right? Right. What if we're only going to have this conversation to decide, are we in alignment or are we out of alignment? Right. right. Is this going to work or it's not going to work? Right. Or what will work or what will not work, right? Instead of someone's going to have to end up wrong and someone and, and capitulating and someone's going to have to end up right and winning. That's a really, um, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, you're only going to get that, you know, maybe 50% of the time. And it's just, it's just uh, set up for failure. Yeah. Now that's a hard thing too, because would this fit in this category um, that someone, you, we got to dispel, someone has to win. <laughs> well, every young man hears this from somebody, you know, this is more for the men that are probably listening. Is that, <laughs> you know, when you get married, you have to choose to be married or right. You can't do yeah. both. <laughs> so would that yeah. fit in this category? Like, because you know this, if you're just trying to be right all the time, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Right. You know, so yeah. you've got to live in the space. There is ambiguity in this, right? There, there is. is. And I, and I'm, but I'm not really talking about, I mean, certainly in some of this, you may comp, you may come to a compromise, right. but I'm not really suggesting that there are, there are times where I'm not, I'm not willing to compromise. So let's go back to our original, our, our original setting. Our mm -hmm. setting was I'm an owner of a business, which I am, and you are, right. and many people who are listening are. And we have decided that we're going to take our business in a particular direction. We are, and that's our prerogative and it's our, our responsibility, I think. Right. And so let's say we did that work and we've got it super clarified. We've also clarified um, in this work, it's not just vision, but it's also values that mm -hmm. we clarify. And you and I talked earlier about the fact that I've been, I've been playing recently in the last few months with dividing values into two different sections. And we actually write out two versions of our values. One set of values we, we call brand values. So what those brand values are, um, are client facing or customer facing. So in other words, who, who, what are we promising that if you do business with Lion Speak, you can count on this from us in terms of our values. This is what we're, we're committing to as a company. Mm -hmm. our, in, in terms of our relationship with our customers, they can count on this, that we're going to stand behind our products, that we're going, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but there's another set of values that we write up, and that is if you come to work for Lion Speak. If you come to work for Lion Speak, we call those cultural values. Those values we want to. You don't you don't make up values, no. right? You 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 have them, or you they're either your value or it's not your value. These, these aren't things we make up. So I'm not asking people to make up. What I am saying is that as an owner who's getting ready to talk about vision, what I want to say to my people is. As we go forward as a group, whoever is in alignment with this and is part of the team or, or in the future that we hire, what we want to say is, I want to clarify for you that it's not only that I'm going here, but this is how I want it to feel and be on the journey. So this, these are my values as an owner that 
if you come to work for Lion's Feet, these are the things that are important to me and how we treat one another as a team, how we support one another, how we hold each other accountable. The, these are the values. So I just want you to be eyes wide open when you, when you raise your hand and say, I love this. I want to be on this team. I want to help create this vision. I want you to know what that work's going to look like, what the culture is going to look like. Because yeah. it might be a fit or not. Does that make sense? So we're just clarifying for people what we expect. Yeah, this makes perfect sense. And really, you know, it takes a while for somebody to realize this, but Core Values is probably one of the most in peace, important bodies of work you'll ever do in your life. Because right. if you really do the hard work that goes with this, you find out who you are and what matters to you. Yes. And what you find is they don't change. Like your DNA no. does not change when you find out. Now, you said this, you said this before, and I love this. Okay, so really your brand values are your uh, customer facing. It's the promise that you make and your cultural values are more internal facing. And let me add one thing, and I want you to just tell me your thoughts on this. It's really important for a dentist to do the core value work in both of these respects. Here's why. Because when you find a team that has similar values or the same values, you experience less stress. I don't care how brilliant a team member is. She can be the most amazing team member ever, does great photographs, unbelievable hygienist. Just, but if her core value, it never works, no matter how no. great they're. Even as an associate, we, you know the lesson you learn over again is we didn't have the same core values. It doesn't matter how powerful the two are. Would you agree or disagree? I agree, but I think that because it doesn't work doesn't mean they don't work there. I see a lot right. of offices that have just, you know, they've gone years, sometimes a decade working with, with people that they can't figure out why it's so miserable and why they can't get any f more traction on a new, especially a new vision. Um, and it's often because of that rub. It's because the values don't line up. And that's often not because of the employee. And, and, we're, and we're getting closer to what I really want to land with your audience. And that is, this is never about them. It's never about them, whoever them is. It's never about the spouse. It's never about the, the person who ran into the back of your car. It's never Ex about... Explain that though, because that's really good. Explain that. What does that mean? Well, because if someone is working for you that isn't a good fit in terms of your cultural values, that's not about them. That, that, this proves my point that I was just making before. They're not wrong. Mm -hmm. Just because they don't line up with your values doesn't make them a wrong-headed person, right? right. That's not, if we could embrace, she's, there's nothing wrong with her. There is nothing wrong with her or him. Um, what is, the only thing that's wrong is I must not as an owner or manager have clarified what it needs to be so that they can decide whether they can align with this or not. That right? is powerful. That, it yeah. always comes back to, it always comes back to us. We've either not been clear. I, I contend that every conflict we're in is because we're either avoiding something, we're participating in something, or we're, you know, we're, we're blind to it. We're actually blind to it. So, you know, if we're, you, you've seen it too. It'll go on for years in family situations, personal friend situations, and, and, and in professional situations where we are avoiding. We know in our gut it isn't a good fit, and we're avoiding the conversation because we think there's going to be a loser and a winner, or there has to be. And what I want to show your audience today is there's a way to do this where there's not a loser or a winner, meaning there's no, we don't have to be right or wrong. We can say... I, I respect that you have your own set of values, as you should, and, and of course I do too. And because I happen to own this business, it's my obligation to clarify for you so you can decide whether this is going to be continue to be a good fit or not, right? It's that kind of conversation. I'm not asking you to change any value that you have. How silly would that be of me? Right. right? That's not my role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love what you said. Now, I also want to add some clarification. Your core values uh, internally, that's not a democratic thing. You don't sit at a team and go, hey, what are our values as a team? It's the business owner's core values or cultural values, correct? It is. And I think your team, I think that's an interesting team discussion. Mm -hmm. I think um, this is how I do it and how I coach to do it. I come up with my own mm -hmm. and I present them to my team. And I don't, I don't really ask my team, do you think this is the right direction for my vision? I never have that. I, I'm clear that that's where I want to go. Right. But I am 
I'm looking for their input in what opportunities do they see, what challenges do they see. You know, I'm interested in hearing that, knowing that it might, it might, I might take that in and come back and massage it a little bit if it really resonated with me, but I don't feel obligated to do it. The same is true with values. I'm going to, I'm as the owner, I'm going to lay out, these are, this is what it means to work here uh, for me to feel good about coming to work every day. Mm -hmm. And so the culture I'm creating is one where, so here's a good example, direct example. Um, one of the values that's important to me is that the people who work for me know that I value their opinion, even if they disagree with me. I value it and I want to hear it. And at the end of the day, after having heard it, it's up to me to make the final decision in whatever matter we're discussing and it may or may not go their way. Right. If they stay on the team, then our, uh, then the value for me is that they could live with that, that they could still embrace that. I still have to make the final decision on this marketing issue or whatever it is, right. but that, but that the culture here and that it's important to me that they feel safe and secure to speak up and say, I think that's a bad move. And here's why, mm -hmm. here's why I think that's not, you know, not going to work. And here's why. And I, I want there to be open dialogue about that. And for nobody to feel that they're going to lose their job because they raise their hand and say, I, I have a different opinion. Right. But at the end of the day, after listening to all that and making sure everybody's been heard, I'm going to have to make a decision and I need to have a team around me that understands that it sometimes it's not going to go their way. Yeah, and I think yeah, it's so eloquent how you said that because so many dentists are afraid to tell people the truth because mm -hmm. of how they might respond. And what you're suggesting is let's get really clear about how we interact yeah. so that when I tell you I'm going to listen, but it may not go your way, you're good with it. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to be open. I want them to know that it's important to me that, that they know that I'm going to come with an open mind and I'm going to really listen and consider their point of view. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to make a decision based on all of those, you know, different pieces of information. I'm going to make the decision that's right for Lion Speak that I think is right for Lion Speak. And nobody has to work here, yeah. right? Nobody has to work here. Nobody's got a gun in their head and says, you got to go to work there every day. Nobody. So, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be a good fit for a lot of people to work for me. I also don't want to, I don't want to hire children. Like yeah. I just, wait, 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 define that. Cause I love this conversation. Go there. Go yeah, there. I don't, I just, I tell them, look, I don't, I don't, I'm only hiring adults, grown grownups. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if we ever had to tell you to get off your cell phone in the middle of a meeting, it wouldn't be a good fit. Right. Because our cultural values is that people are mature, that they are right. self-regulated, they're self-directed. I work from home. I'm on the road at least 50% of the time, if not more in certain seasons. And so I, I can't babysit people and I don't want to. And so if you come to work for Lion Speak, you're going to have a very mature, self-directed work ethic. It's the only way it would work. And I want people who come to work for me to know it right, right off the bat. Right. Love so that's that. cultural value. Yeah. Love it. What other yeah. ground rules do you, anything else that you have as far as ground rules? Oh gosh, we have all kinds of ground rules. I mean, you know, just about uh, accountability. I want them to know that they can hold me accountable to the things I say I'm going to do for the team mm -hmm. as much as I'm going to hold them accountable to, to follow through with the things that they're committing to. So we are, we're careful about what we commit to. Because we have permission to hold each other accountable to that. And it's been a great growth process for me because it's important to me that my people believe that I'm going to follow through with the things I say I'm going to do. And I want to know that I can count on that as well. So, you know, those are examples of cultural values, you know, and of course, integrity is there, honesty. I mean, the, all of those are in there. But um, it's also important to me that we communicate well and handle conflict well because we're teaching it. So one of my values is that I don't put people, like I wouldn't put someone up um, uh, as a speaker's coach, let's say, or, um, or I wouldn't put someone to coach leadership that's never, that's never led a team, that's never led a team successfully. I would not hire that person to be a trainer on leadership, or I wouldn't hire someone to teach speakers how to speak better from the platform if they've never been a successful speaker on their own. Right, right, right. I just wouldn't do it. So that's a value for me um, as an owner. And it's, it, it's also a promise that's kind of crosses over. It's kind of overlaps. You know, it's a, it's a cultural value in the sense that, um, if we're going to say we're good at something and train others in my company, I want that to be true. 
It, yeah. It's important to me that that's true and that we feel really confident about it. And as, and that also becomes a brand promise yep. that if you get a trainer from me, they're going to have already had personal success in the things they're training on. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now let's say I'm a dentist and I say, okay, I'm doing this. I write them out. It's a very, I'll just tell you firsthand. It's a very freeing experience. Yeah. Like you free yeah. up a lot of your brain space and then you start to put pieces of your past together and like, Oh, oh, that's, that's why. I, and you can also <laughs> see your own fault in it. You can see yeah. where things went wrong, where it was, it was truly your responsibility to be clear. Now I start moving towards my future. Yes. And these, I get it too. Like, I don't, I always think there's no comfort in growth. There's no, like the word comfort doesn't fit into growing. You know what I mean? So what do I do, Catherine? So I'm like going to my team, telling them I want to do this. And you can see them. They're like, Ooh, what happens when conflict starts coming up to the surface, which it will. It will, especially, so here's what I know. The clearer you get, the more it's there, right? Whoa, because the, wait, 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 it's supposed to go away. <laughs> I know, I know, and it won't. It will eventually, but at the beginning, especially if they've been, people have been working for you for a long time and there's been no clarity about who we are and who we're not and where we're going and where we're not going. Once you get super clear about that, there are more clear questions because there's greater clarity. Okay. Right? As it's long as you can tell me that's just a little storm that will start to go down a little that's bit. Right. That's good. That's right. That's wow. right. Okay. So then what do I do? You have All right. To be, so okay. I'm going to give you a great example. I'm on the faculty of the Dental Business Institute, which is um, a program through Henry Schein. It's sort of like yeah. a dental MBA, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm on the, so we just started a new class a couple weeks ago and I'm on the first weekend of a, it's a year long curriculum and, um, and it, and I'm on the very first day of the very first weekend mm -hmm. talking about vision and values and all of this. And so uh, toward the end of the day, we have a section in the curriculum where we're talking about. Um, how do you stand up if you're not a speaker, right? Which most dentists and business owners aren't. Right. Um, how do you stand up and do this fairly well in front of your team? Um, most of the dentists that come to DBI are looking to explore the possibility of scaling their business or scaling it bigger than they already have. Mm -hmm. So when they clarify this new vision, maybe they've been a solo uh, entrepreneur or, or practitioner, or maybe they've had just a couple locations or a couple of associates, but they're kind of playing with the idea of what would it look like to grow this business on a larger scale. So they come there to learn how to do it. Right. So almost everybody in the class is considering this new, slightly, you know, different direction. And I tell them the first thing you have to do is get clear about it. The second is you have to present this to your team and handle any concerns that come up given the new direction mm -hmm. and the clarity around values. So, so in the curriculum, I said, so here's how we're going to do it. Um, I want you to think, imagine this was so, you know, there's 12 or 15 dentists in the room, uh, owners. I said, I want you to imagine, um, that you've just presented this new vision. You were going left and now you told them, you know what, I actually kind of think we're gonna go a little right. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna change our, you've done all that. And now someone has raised their hand. And I said, I bet everybody in the room knows who that'll be on their team, because there's the most vocal person on your team. So they're gonna raise, when you say, so what do you think? What, what does this bring up for you? What concerns do you have about this? What questions do you have? You know, what, what's, what's kind of what's boiling up for you and coming up to the surface for you when, when we talk about this? Mm -hmm. Who's that person and what are they going to say? I want you to think of the hardest objection, the, the biggest concern you can think of. So one gal in the group is raising her hand and she's like bouncing up on her chair and it was like she wanted to ask this question all her life, right? And so I said, well, okay, I'll pick you. I said, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to be, I said, is, is this a man or a woman that you're thinking of? She said, it's a woman mm -hmm. in my practice that works for me. And she's an excellent employee, probably one of the most excellent employees I have in terms of her work ethic, in terms of the quality of her work and all of that. Um, and she said, but I know when I tell her this, that I know what her objection's going to be. And I said, okay, good. So I want you to be her okay. because, and, he, and I, because I'm going to answer it 
And I'm going to use some techniques. They're going to be based on these foundational things we're going to talk about. And I'm, you're going to notice some techniques. And I want, the reason I want to do this in front of this whole group is because in life, in real life, you will not know that what that question is most of the time, or there's going to be some surprises. Yeah. And so I want your audience and I wanted this audience that I was talking to, to see that that's the beauty of these tips that I'm going to give you. The beauty is no matter what comes at you without any notice or without any understanding prior to, it's not like we can go back and pre-plan our response. I mean, sometimes, sometimes if you're going to take the conflict to someone, you can, you can think through how you're going to respond. But if it's just coming at you, you got to know these skills to really navigate it well, I think. And so that was the beauty. So she says, here's what she says. Um, well, part of my vision is that um, I want to bring in some new uh, treatment modalities. I want to, we want to take on sleep dentistry and we want to take on some higher levels of full mouth reconstructions and some different, different things. And she said, it's going to require, my belief is that it's going to require my team to go to some continuing ed, probably more than we have in the past. And she said, so I know when I say that to this group, this woman is going to say, I said, well, just be her. So here's what she said. Okay, doctor. So um, I understand that, you know, if we do all these things, we're going to have to go get educated about them. And I'm assuming that what you're saying is we're going to have to go to some weekend or evening courses or things that are going to take us outside of work hours. Um, is that right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm playing her now, right? I'm playing right. the doctor. And I said, um, it, it, it will. It absolutely will. And she said, well, I um, just want to tell you that, you know, I work really hard when I'm here and I think I do a pretty darn good job. And um, I'm committed. I'm absolutely committed to this practice. Um, but I do not want to give more than what I'm currently working. And to tell you the truth, I like everybody here, but I don't need any more. I have my own friends outside. I don't want to go spin. I don't want to go on a team building retreat. That we have to go do sleepovers. Right. I don't want to do sleepovers. Um, I, I have my own friends. I have my own personal life. And I'll, when I'm here, I'm going to be a hundred percent here, but when I'm off, I'm off. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not, I, I'm not doing it. Yeah. And Kirk, you could have heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here going, you could have heard all it. The time. Like, what would right, you do? Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I smiled and like I grinned inside. Uh -huh. Like I was giddy inside. And I know it's weird. It's weird. You're like game on, right? But I was like, oh, I love this stuff. So, so I'm like, okay, great, perfect. Mm -hmm. So, I can't show your audience here, but I was standing as a doctor probably would have been standing because they would have been at a meeting and they would have been, you know, talking about their vision. So she was seated. So the first thing I did is I smiled gently. I leaned in. I moved a little closer to her gently. And when I did, I grabbed a chair and I brought it over and I sat down on my kind of on my way over. So I'm trying to get um, as much sort of level with her as I can, right? I, I, not, I, I. Yeah, not in an apologetic way and certainly not in an aggressive way um, or in a manipulative way. I just want her to feel that I'm not bothered, that I'm actually enjoying this conversation, I'm embracing it, and I feel really sure we're going we're gonna to be successful, 100%. So as I'm doing that, in my mind, I'm, I'm reminding myself of this first foundational piece, which is she's not wrong. Mm -hmm. But do you see how it felt like she's, she thinks she's right, I think I'm right, and we are, somebody's going to have to give. Yeah. Somebody is going to lose. Well, your claws go up right away. You're yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I went to dental school and you don't know that I lived in an apartment and ate ramen noodles and right. $100,000 was dead and it's very stressful and we have these things called liability insurance and my overhead's like crazy. That's oh, right. and you're just, you know what I mean? Like that's your natural response. So what you're saying is just take a breath and yes. embrace it. And just Yes, open up, like open okay. up and say, and here's what I say to myself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to practice this. Thank you for the opportunity to show her, my team, and the world that there is a way to do this where I can honor her. Right. I can literally honor her and stand strong in my own place. 
So this is what I was saying, Kirk, earlier when I said, I don't think this necessarily means compromise. Like if, if I'm that dentist, I've already decided. I've already decided that we're doing this. You're not, I'm not asking your permission, any of you on the team. I'm not. And I'm not asking if it's the right thing to do to go to these courses and learn this information or go to team building retreats to strengthen our team or whatever. I've already decided that's happening. Mm -hmm. So I'm not budging from that. But I want her to know that I honor that she may very well not hold that same value and not be interested in that same vision. And I want to take responsibility. So, so the first one is forget, just get rid of that idea that somebody's going to have to be completely wrong, right? Okay. That two people can be right at the same time and still disagree. The second right? piece is open up open and not, up. not respond in a way that it would be sandpaper as it's received. That's right. right. That's What's right. the third but piece though? Help me with, like, I, I'm trying with the thinking, but what, what are the, what's going to come out of my mouth that might well, be what different? What I want you to think is, um, this is my, this is my doing in that. Now, so leaders take ownership of every situation. So mm-hmm. as I'm getting closer to her, I'm thinking, what's my role in this? We've clearly come to a, to a place of disagreement, right? So what's my role in this? Your role could have been, it could be a lot of things, but let's just say, um, I said to her, well, first of all, I said, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the first piece of the step is to acknowledge them. I want to acknowledge, and I just want to say that how much I appreciate your willingness and your courage to speak your truth. And I want you to know that I honor it. Um, And that I'm really, I'm really feel blessed that, we've somehow created an environment where you feel safe enough to step up and say what you really think and say what you really feel. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. The second thing I want to tell you is that I want to take some responsibility here in this way until now. I don't think I've really been clear about my vision, but I got clear. And until now I haven't really clearly defined it for all of you and certainly for you. And so It makes sense that now that I have, now that I've got the clarity and now that I've clarified it for you, that now you're, there is, there is a heightened chance that you will now, any of you will have greater clarity that you may or may not be a fit. Right. And I want you to know that I honor that and that I would never, ever ask you to compromise your own personal values. So if your values are that, you work certain hours and when you're off, you're off and you never sacrifice that personal time with your family, that personal time with your friends, that personal time in that part of your life. I would 100% support that. I would 100% respect that. And it may also be that we would no longer be able to work together. Mm. And I want you to know that I, I honor that and that I would respect and support that. Do you see Right, right. That sounded so nice. Yeah, because that was my question is, is that what if they say, hey, look, but you didn't hear me. I'm not doing that. You're at the same token saying, hey, look, this may not work out. It takes a really, this, you're, what you're talking about is emotional intelligence or behavioral intelligence to say, hey, look, to recognize where we're at and let them know because, Catherine, you know how this works. If you're not clear with them, they can go to the other side, which is not so much disengaged, but it's actively disengaged, which is the most yes. dangerous, which means they're now working to quietly sabotage you. Would That's you right. agree? And that, that doesn't have a lot, but it does happen. Where you, are you saying that where she would like go, okay, well then I'll, I guess I'll do it. I guess no, I'll- no, no, she wouldn't do it. And she, while everyone else was at the courses, she would say, I'll show him, because I've been here forever, how dare him. And then, you know, these sleep patients call and I don't schedule them. You know what yeah, I mean? Well, or, so that, it's not her. If right. you allow that to remain, like I would, I would be on that in a heartbeat. Right. I would be sitting down one-on-one saying, uh, this feels uncomfortable. You know, yeah. it, um, what I'm looking for, here's, I'm always talking forward. Well, I, right. I didn't that or I haven't done that and I refuse to talk backwards I just say going forward um here's how I need to feel this is what I need to hear this is what I need to what I need to see with you and it may or may not you know it may or may may not be in alignment with your own personal values and that I really understand that and I respect it yeah I just want to say one thing if you're listening to this you're watching this is powerful stuff you know I, I hope you understand 
This is very high level behavioral aspects of leadership that are critically important. But sometimes we need the help of somebody like you to navigate because these become very dangerous situations for us if we're not framed right. Now, Catherine, can I ask you a question? Because I need this for my own learning. Okay. Is that if I breathe it in, I go knee to knee, I respect and honor, but then I'm also clear what happens, like bring that conversation to a close and I say, okay. this may not work out for us. Do I just stop right there? Okay. And then so just one look. I, one thing I missed that I want to add is be sure that when you honor them, you put a period at the end of that sentence. It's really easy to say, well, I want you to know that I understand your point of view and I respect it and I honor it, but I'm going to need, and people put that but in there. And it it, me, it almost sounds like I really didn't mean what I said. So I'm really going to encourage your listeners to, one of the techniques is to put a period there. If you put anything there, put an and. And, yes. And, all right. So I honor it. And what I'm going to need is a, a team that is willing, not, not only will, I, this is what I would say. I would say not only willing, but excited about those weekend courses, about expanding their knowledge. I don't want any of you to do this unless you're really excited because I care about you as human beings. I don't want you dragging yourself to a course and hating every minute of it. Why would you do that? You're all great. You all, but this is about alignment. This is right. about it works or it doesn't work. It's in alignment or it's, it, it's in alignment with your personal values to work here. Right. Or it's not. And, and that I doesn't make either one of us wrong. Yeah, I want to bring this back because it supports what you said earlier, which is it, this is not about her. This is about you because I. this is what I needed from you and I got it. You said to the team member at that point, I respect that, but here's what I am going to need going forward, which is I need a team that's willing and excited. And now this t person has an opportunity to choose. Well, you just said the right word. One of the foundational beliefs we teach is something uh, that we call um, being at choice. So I am committed to living my life at choice under no one else's. I mean, I'm not a victim to any circumstance. I'm not a victim to anyone else's uh, vision or I, I run my life. I make my own. I'm at choice always how I feel, how I respond, Love the decisions that. that I make. And I want the people who work for me and the people I live with and, and, and socialize with, I want to support them in living their life at choice. Mm -hmm. And so if I have a team of people working for me, I'm going to say, look, I care about you as, I mean, I care about you as team members, but I care even more about you as human beings. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, what I'm committed to personally, one of my values is that we encourage people to never be a victim ever be a victim, but always to be living at choice. And you are at choice in my practice. You do not have to work here. Love it. That is great. You do not have to work here. If you raise your hand and say, I want to work here, I, I, I can't imagine after getting this clarity, I'd work anywhere else, then that's easy. Mm -hmm. um, it's also easy if you say, now that I've gotten great clarity, I definitely don't want to work here. Both of those on the two ends are really easy. The ones that are harder is, I'm not sure. I think I do, but I'm not sure. And I can live with that. I could say, okay, so what do we need to do to help you decide if this is going to work for you? Well, I need a little time. I need some questions answered. I need to talk to my husband to see if he's going to support me going away for two or three weekends a year. Okay. Okay. So I, I would be willing. That's where then we're going to maybe reach some compromise where we're going to say, okay, well then let's take a month or let's take two weeks and give you what you need to figure this out. And ultimately, I'm going to need a commitment one way or the other. Right? Yeah. Can I, uh, this is so good and I need this personally. Okay. So we've talked about how you're um, proactively training your brain to respond to the person who might be most vocal. Yes. But what about the team member who's important that doesn't say anything when you present this? Do you have any words of wisdom? Because you know, yes. some team members will go and yeah. their language or behavior will show, but then they don't say anything. Yeah. Like, give us some insight on that. What would you, how would you approach so, that? And remember, it's never them. You got to right. keep telling yourself it's never okay. them. All right. Okay. They're perfect the way they are. They are perfect the way they are. 
I'm that's just hard. That's really it's hard. hard. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking for alignment. They're right where they're supposed. Not everybody is is at the level we need them to be, or at our level. Not they're not there yet. Maybe right. and maybe they never will be. And so if I just say, well, they they are where they are, and um, I just I'm just constantly trying to decide if where they are is going to be a good alignment for where I need them to be. So I, I see the person, she's not responding, she's sitting over in the corner, I can't get a read, or maybe I get a read body language wise, but I, she's not saying anything. I'll call on her. I'll say, so one of the values in our culture, in this culture, is that, is that nobody gets to be, uh, nobody gets to sit outside the team. Right. Wow. So, okay. um, so Jane, I noticed that you haven't you haven't really said anything, or you haven't really, um, you know, you, it doesn't it doesn't seem you have any questions. But I'm but I'm not feeling uh, a, a huge level of excitement. Help me understand where you are. Help me understand. Okay. Are you asking that in front of the team or privately? In front of the team. In front what of if, the team. What if? Because right? you know how this could go. Because let's say you have a team of eleven people, and she goes, "Well, I'll tell you why I'm not saying anything." Yeah. Because blah, blah, and this just, you go, oh, and now you've got nine oh, others. Oh, no. here's Kirk. Here's the thing. Now you bless it. Now okay. you started the cycle all yeah. over again. Good. You say, thank you. Thank you again. One more opportunity for me to practice. One more opportunity for me to show what leadership looks like. One more. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I pretty frequently say, guys, I want you to know I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure that I'm doing this right. Or, or I, I'll sometimes say, I, I want to work this out. And to tell you the truth right now, I'm not seeing a clear path. So I think I need some time or I need to get back with my own coach or I'm going to ask for, I'm going to ask that we come back and revisit this in 48 hours or something like that. You know, I don't, we're not perfect. And I think it's really refreshing to a team when we say, I want to go here, but to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure if it's going to work and I don't really know how to do it. Right. And I'm looking for a team that'll come on board with me and will ride the ride. Right. It's, so you're suggesting good leadership includes a little vulnerability and yeah. some transparency. You know, but you don't have to be completely vulnerable, but you can say, look. I, I'm learning this too. You know, right. I'm, I'm navigating this as a new skill as well. Let me try this on. Um, what I'm looking for is a team that is self-directed to get into the conversation. So what I need to know from you is, do you feel safe enough to say what's on your mind? Because I really want to know it's important that I know right. um, so that we can deal with it. I don't want any hidden agendas here. You right. Know? Now, now you said a magic word, which was safe, because that's important. Tell us why, because a lot of dentists go, no, my team members talk freely. And some of them go, oh, he thinks we do, but we don't. So can you describe why? Well, I'll tell you um, the how you create safety is when there don't there doesn't have to be winners or losers, right? right? When you're clear about it, uh, whatever the situation is, whatever the standard is, um, and you create that ability for me to speak my mind and see if I can align. And if you're always encouraging me to be at choice and not be a victim. Uh, then, then you're building people who become safe, saying, this is where I stand on this issue. And I get that that may not be in alignment any longer, you know? So, so I, I think that's where you build safety is in creating that high mature level of conversation. Right. This is really powerful levels of thinking. How could I apply this as a dentist maybe when I go home too? Because you're going to have conflict in all parts of your life. It's the home. same. You know, if you yeah. have a teenager, you have daily opportunities to apply this. What if you have three teenage girls? Can oh you use it? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, you know, when I, when I, when I, you know, I've had, I don't have teenagers now, but I did. And, and so when, you know, I say to them, look, you know, you, I trust you. I, I, um, or I, I would say I believe in you. I believe that you're going to make the decisions that you think are right. And ultimately, you're going to figure it out. I have faith that you're going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, living here, if you continue to live here, these will be the rules. Because in this house, right, I'm the leader. I get to pick the vision. I get to pick the values. They're mine. And so living here... Here's, here are the non-negotiables, right? Mm -hmm. And I trust that you're going to either do it or you're going to figure out a way to come to me and make a better case or however it's going to go. But, but I, I'm, the, I'm the leader here as the, 
leader of this family, right? And yeah. that, and so when you, when you have your own place or you have your own income or whatever, then you'll be, then I want to show you what good leadership looks like. And right now this is what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. You see, yeah. you guys, she used the word and, I <laughs> was, and yeah. that is really just, important. You know, I think um, it really is true, Kirk, that, People are hungry for this kind of clarity and leadership. It feels like they don't want you to do it, but it's just like children. They actually do. They actually feel more settled, more um, confident, and more um, aligned when they're clear what's, what's acceptable, what's not, what's in alignment, what's out of alignment. It's so, it's freeing. This is really freeing when you can stand strong in your decisions um, that's what we don't, we often don't do well. And we don't leave everyone else mature and whole in their own decisions and honor that. It's just such a, it's such a freeing thing. And that's why I said it kind of gets, it kind of gets stormy, right? When you make, get the clarity, but if you navigate the pushback this way, very quickly, things get easier. They just get easier. Mm -hmm. Um, because life's gotten easier for me. Doing business has gotten easier because I got, because I did this work. I did this work. Yeah. yeah I'm going to totally wholeheartedly piggyback on what you said and completely agree. People don't want this. They're starving. For yeah. it. They're starving. Every organization, every family, every country, every, everybody's yeah. starving for great leadership, every sports program. Yep. This is where we're headed. And yep. guess what? It's going to be very exciting. You know, we're, we're dying for that. So I could yeah. not agree more. So um, other thoughts that you have on this, because these are such great tools that you've given us. Well, we really kind of talked about those foundational things of, you know, bless it, embrace it, see it as a great opportunity. Don't avoid it. Step into it and step mm -hmm. into it without, without aggression or without anger, you know, just neutral, just shift into neutral if you can. Mm -hmm. And um, anticipate a good outcome. I, I totally anticipate a good outcome right from the beginning. If, 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 any, if nothing else, the outcome will be that I will learn. I will learn something from this. What worked? What didn't? You know, where I need some more coaching, um, whatever. So it's all going to be, no matter how it ends up, I'm gonna, it's going to be good. It's going to be fine. Um, and then, you know, try to leave them, make them right and, and leave them whole and um, establish this mature at choice culture. So those are some of the foundational things. The system, real quickly, I call ARCH. And here's what the acronym stands for. The A stands for acknowledge them. That's that. Thank you for bringing this up. I just want to compliment your courage to speak your mind, you know, acknowledge them, right? Uh, and the A also stands for find agreement wherever you can. So for example, in the earlier, in the earlier situation I described, the way I might have found agreement early on was to say, I want you to know that I 100% agree with you in this regard. It's important that every one of us here is clear on our own life vision and our own personal values so that we can then hold that up to the business we're working for and see if we align with those values, mm -hmm. right? So what, what you just showed us and you were the beautiful example of um, was what it looks like when you're clear about your personal values and your vis life vision and you're, and now I've created clarity for the business vision and you now need to see if this is going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I just want to honor that. So that's, that's finding. So we agree there. So she's going to shake her head. Okay. I agree with that. So now we get to start with my R in arch, which represents, I'm going to make a request, right? Or I'm going to somehow say, and I'm going to connect these two with and that's where the and comes is between the A and the R. Um, so I honor this. This is where we agree. And um, my request is that you ask any questions you have about the vision and the values and where we're going, because I've already made my decision and there are some non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. There's some non-negotiables, right? right? And um, so I, I just want you to know that I get that that may or may not work for you now that I, now that I have finally given you this clarity. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, it's a, and then the C stands for, okay, so once she says, all right, well, then I'm going to think, could, could, I, could I have um, a couple days to think about it? 
I would, that would be acceptable to me. And I would say, sure. So the C is for confirm what you think you just agreed to. And I could not, I could not emphasize how important this step is because there's been a lot of emotion in this conversation so far. And we may not have heard the agreement the same way. Yeah, I got to tell you, I've had a visceral reaction to what you're taking me through. I think I'm sweating, you know, I've been sweating through this last, uh, you know, 45 (laughs) minutes. So it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, And so the confirmation might sound like, so um, that's perfectly fine with me. I think it's a great idea. And I'm going to agree to that. And so just to confirm, um, we're agreeing that in 48 hours, so this time on Wednesday, uh, by the end of the day on Wednesday, you're going to take the time you need to think about it. And we're going to meet for a few minutes before you go home at the end of the day on Wednesday, we're going to have another conversation. Is that how, is that, is that the agreement you thought we made? And then they're either going to say yes or no. And most of the time you're going to recognize that you got it wrong or they got it wrong. Right. So thank, so thank God we clarified. So A is for acknowledgement, find agreement, connect with Ann to make a request, basically reach a new, a new understanding. Uh, If you do confirm it, And then the H stands for hope. I always am going to leave that conversation to say, you know, I just want to say thank you for for just sticking in the conversation. And I'm actually pretty excited about the solution that we came up with. And I'm feeling really positive that, um, you know, it's going to work. Or if it doesn't work, that you and I are going to be able to come back together and figure out another solution. So thank you. Right? Mm -hmm. Just something, in your own words, something positive that says, this was awesome. You know, we did good work here. We worked through, we worked through a, a disagreement and it was great. And thank you. Yeah. So the H just to clarify, hope, it, hope is H-O-P-E. Yeah. It's a hopeful, cause... it's a hopeful end to that conversation. I'm, I'm opti- you're saying I'm optimistic that this is going to, this, this new agreement that we've come to is going to, going to work. And if it doesn't, uh, we're going to come back together. Yeah. Love it. This is a great system because a lot of times we need tools or just a methodology or something that just helps us get through these. And these, this is fantastic. I'm going to start using this. Oh, good. I hope so. This afternoon. <laughs> so <laughs> when you get home to those three teenage daughters. <laughs> I know. I know. So any other considerations that you have, you know, cause I know we don't, oh, gosh, I would love to, you know, I know you have to go in just a few minutes, but bring this all together as any perspective. And then I know you and I talked about a, a kind of, you know, I was going to hold a special situation. For yeah. You, but- yeah. Um, I would just leave, I would just leave you with this parting thought. This work is probably more important than any work you'd ever do in your business or life. It makes everything else easier. It, 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 it catapults you to the top of the leadership uh, pyramid. Um, these are the emotional intelligence skills that are missing uh, I think in society and in um, how we run our companies and our families. And so I'm just on a mission to help people see that this could go better uh, and they could be the shining example of that in their communities. So, right. Well, I'm full, I am full in full support of your mission. And also too, the other thing is it also allows you to be who you really want to be in your life. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's when you experience your, hap- your happiness is when you are congruently becoming, yeah. you know, there's something about aging where you're like, there's a good part of aging where you're like, I don't care anymore. I'm, this is who I am. I'm <laughs> just, right. you know, it's, it's a certain freeing, but we're talking about a much healthier thought process than that. And that's And it shows great. you, I think it shows you, Kirk, to your, to the people who you live and work with that you're not living in fear. You're not living in the, that right. victim mentality either, that you've stepped into owning uh, this, this life of yours, you know, and this business of yours. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So gosh, you are so awesome. And I, <laughs> can I just throw a curveball at you? Cause you and I didn't sure. discuss this. You know, I have a hundred of these, but one of my favorite is, is that when we try to get the schedule right and we always ask a dentist, like, how long does it take this to, for you to do this? And he goes, Oh, hour. And everyone goes, Oh my God. Like <laughs> he is so unaware. And he's like, Oh, I'm always on time. And people are like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> So take us into that. Like when a dentist is very confident that they do this now, they're always on time. They always make their meetings, you know, 
Just so let's buy into it. It's a great example, Kirk. This this um the situation of anybody stepping into a leadership role. It, this is not reserved for the owner of a business. So what this would be is a team or a team member taking this to their boss, mm -hmm. right? Right. So imagine now I'm going to say, uh, maybe now we're at a team meeting and scheduling has come up, right? And it's all off kilter because he thinks one way and we think another. So um, I'm going to say, so I would like to, to, um, throw an issue out to be discussed and it's about how we schedule uh, these appointments and um, so again I, in my mind I'm thinking this is so cool because I get to practice these skills it doesn't really matter how this works out the first time I do it right I'm just gonna practice so I'm gonna open up to how do I make him right um, and still hold on to my point of view here still make my case so I'm going to step into, so um, would it be fair to say, I'm going to, I'm trying to find agreement. Would it be fair to say that, doctor, you and all of us here at the meeting want the practice to run on time as much as possible? Would it be fair to say that at least my understanding of one of our values is that people don't have long wait times when they come to, that one of our customer service brand values, our promises to the to the you know clients is that they won't have to wait for hours when they come here We're, that we'll respect their time as much as possible is that is that still a value absolutely they would say mm -hmm. okay so be that be this doctor kirk okay yeah. but you would say so remember i don't just remember i have no system for unreasonable crazy people right now i want to pause because you're also asking me a question you're not making sure. a statement to me which i have to answer do you know right. what I mean? so so yeah, that's a great way to do the A, which is acknowledge and agree. It's like, let's get right. to an agreement and I'm going to ask you a question that we would both agree on. Right. So, so you be that doctor. So you would say what to that? I would say absolutely. It's critically important that we're on time. I totally agree with that. That's okay. like what we should do. Perfect. So um, my experience of us running on time the last two weeks has been that we have been um, not on time. Has, is that, has that been your experience? Yes, that is true. Okay. We have been. All right. So one of the, my request would be that um, we figure out how to schedule appropriately um, and accurately, more accurately, and still make production goals, still make the profit margins we need. Um, I would like to make a couple of suggestions for how we could do that. And I'd love to canvas the group to see what other suggestions we have so that we do two things. We run more on time. We raise the, we raise the percentage of us running on time. And we also maintain our production goals and our profit margin. Would you be open to some suggestions around that, Doc? Of course I would. That's okay. like music to my ears. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. So here, here are my suggestions. I'd like to time, if we could, for the next... Um, you know, three or four days, if we could just assign somebody to actually time when, and let's agree today, like, what are we timing? The moment the butt hit, the patient's butt hits the chair or when they put their hand on the doorknob of the door to the practice, what are we timing? Let's get some accurate data. And can we agree? Nobody's right or wrong. Nobody's getting punished. We just want to see what is. We just want to see reality. And then let's come back and look at our pricing and make sure that for the time it takes to do this well and for you to feel good about it so that you can stand behind your work, that we need to charge appropriately. And then we'll see where we are. Would that be fair? We'll report it back at the next meeting. Be very fair. I would love it. Okay. Great. So that's how these conversations. So I don't make him wrong. I don't want to get into the. And if he says, well, I'm already, I know how much time. I know how much time it takes and I say, okay, great. So could we still, would it be still acceptable to go ahead and time that then? Mm -hmm. And then and we'll just see. I, I don't go backwards. I just go forwards, even yeah. though he did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. So that's wow. how it works. That's how it works. And then introduce some hope that, you know, yeah. at the end that we're going to, yeah. we're going to, we're going to find out a way to, to accomplish what we. And if this doesn't do it, I'm sure we're going to come back to the table and we'll find some other solution. We're going to find a solution one way or the other. So thank you, doctor, for agreeing, you know, for just being willing to, to get in and figure this out. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited. 
Yeah, and I want to thank you. Because, I want to thank you because every time you and I interact, you give me more. You challenge my brain. Like it, <laughs> I, I'm sweating, but my brain is like challenged. And now I have some. I've got a framework that I need to go to work on. And there's no endpoint. This is just that you got to stay in process. And that's uh, it. You know, one of the things we're working on right now is a new speech, a new presentation that we're calling um, the Unplugged Leadership Lecture. And what we're, what we're crafting is, I'll teach for about uh, 30 minutes or an hour, but then for the remaining time, we're going to put two big living room style chairs on the stage, and we're going to invite people up to bring their best issues up there, and we're just going to handle them in real time in front of the group. And I'm hoping that that's going to be really a fun um, lecture for people to come to and bring these issues and see how I don't know what they're going to bring but if you just have a few of these principles you can usually navigate them well how about this you get the first session going we're let's do one of these live I'll bring multi cameras Wouldn't and we'll just fun? show up and we'll show oh. all the followers how this works and you guys will be really blown away. and the followers can add like oh throw this one in there and you go come on bring it on <laughs> we'll get some I would good love ones. that Oh my gosh, I would love that too. Catherine, you are always amazing. And I just want to say a couple things. You actually teach a workshop that is fabulous. And you've got it coming up on March 1st and 2nd. Can you just yep. tell us about this and why people should attend? Uh, it's called Leaders of the Pride. Uh, it's, a, it's just that. It's two days of taking a deep dive into these kinds of conversations. But we start with how do leaders think differently than maybe, you know, good leaders uh, differently than other people. And then based on that platform, that new sort of emotional platform, how do they then open their mouths and speak differently, whether that is in creating this vision alignment, whether it's handling conflict, whether it's having, we have a whole new approach to team meetings. I think team meetings have become boring and it's kind of old school. We haven't, we haven't revamped the way dental teams do meetings in decades. So we have a kind of a new, fresh way of doing them. It's pretty cool. We talk about that. We talk about growth conferences, which are like employee reviews. Um, we talk about one-on-one -on -one conversations with under performing employees and and just how do you navigate all those leadership moments uh, in a business so we have um, you know team leaders if they're a hygiene team leader or a clinical lead uh, if they're an office manager or an owner it's a perfect two days um, and March 1st and 2nd right now we're offering $200 off that workshop till the end of the month uh, to the end of January and if they just go onto the website uh, and put in the promotion code JAN, J-A-N, 200, uh, it, will, it will get them that uh, discounted fee. We'd love, to, we'd love to see any of your viewers there. It's in San Diego in March, the end of February, 1st of March, so come on. You gotta <laughs> go. Now, some, of this, some people are listening on iTunes and they may not see, so the, the website, um, Catherine, is lionspeak.net, correct? That's to right. find out more Lion about you. Yeah, L I O N speak S P E A K dot net. Dot yeah. net. Check it mm -hmm. out. Your investment in yourself and becoming a better leader is probably one of the best investments you could ever make and give you the biggest return. So, yeah, we have a blast too. So, yeah, come and join us. Never a dull moment with you in person, on screen, anything, Catherine. I'm just crazy grateful. So thank you so much. And uh, Oh, you're so welcome. We're going to have Catherine back again and again and again on different subjects. So if you're listening to this and you want to explore another topic or another challenge or another conflict, add it and we'll have her back and she will uh, enlighten us with a new way to think. So Catherine, thank you Anytime. so much. I'm so grateful. Thank um, you. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you guys for watching the Best Practice Show. Do us a favor if you enjoyed today, which I know you really did, please hit the share button, share it with your friends because this stuff is hugely valuable. And uh, until we see you next time, keep watching the Best Practice Show. You guys have a great rest of your day.